Right, as I was uh, looking around my Phalaenopsis, see how they're doing, um, I thought I might as well get those out that I consider delinquents. So uh, here they are, and I'll just go over them one by one and give you a bit of history and why am I struggling with these? Why do I struggle with these and others just don't have a problem with conversion? I don't know. Let's have a look. So um, let's start with the worst looking one because this is a prime example of what I'm dealing with. This is a no ID, but my daughter gave it to me. I named it Little Freckles because of the blooms. White with little brown Bordeaux colored speckles that remind me of freckles on her face. And it was beautiful. I waited for it to show me some signs of root growth, etc., as you do. And I put it into my standard LECA setup, soft watering. And then, boom, here we go. This is what happens with me. So Daniel's Orchid Ranch has a wonderful, wonderful series on how to save these. And I've been following them, her tips. And she says, when the orchid looks like this, it's about time that it will start creating new roots. Well, the time, the situation is pretty, pretty dire. So if you can see inside there, you see I have a microcloth threaded around one little root stump that has not done anything. It has not changed, it has not moved, it has not grown. And that's the situation we're at now. It sat on Lekka and there's a little bit of water in the bottom. And that's it. That's how they go. Even though I wait for root growth. So I don't know. I don't understand. So that's little freckles and it's a prime example of what I'm struggling with when it comes to these fowls. Here is a complex hybrid Phalaenopsis, which I call Alexandra. I call it Alexandra because my daughter bought it for herself. And she came home with it. And then we had a little bit of aerosol blotching on the flowers, but never mind. This is a solid, solid performer. A long time ago, I had it just in lava rock. But that was getting tedious because it was so vigorous and so thirsty that I changed it into semi-hydro self-watering and I'm glad I did because it is taking well there is no stalling no nothing the roots are diving in and uh, silly me I sunburnt it last year oh, a bit cross about that but okay that was my fault however I just cut its spike off for this year because I don't like that it is Still a bit wobbly in here, I don't like that. A bit of microfiber cloth just around the base that I missed every once in a while. No, I want this one to become the way it was. The way it was, it, the way it bloomed last year spring. I didn't appreciate that the vegetative growth during the summer was minimal, minimal at best, knowing what this orchid can do. So we'll see what it does this summer. More leaves would be great, and a solid root-bound pot would be awesome. And here is a complex hybrid that I call Bubba, because that's what I call my daughter. Um, and it was one of the first purchases that we did together after a very, very long time. And the first purchase, this is number three. The two priors all keeled over didn't make it so in my defense the first one I looked at uh, the crown and I said whoa I don't like what's going on in there it's a terminal spike that was cut away because I, I got it at a discount um, and I didn't like the idea of that at all and well it didn't take too kindly to being transitioned without a crown without any growth potential so that one went downhill we found another one also at the discounted rate because the blooms had gone over and tried it with that one 
no terminal spike everything was hunky-dory new roots were growing I put it into my setup and boom that one didn't make it either same result as what you saw with little freckles earlier this is number three at full price and I thought it was extremely expensive for a Phalaenopsis but now it means a lot to me one my ego secondly you know I got it with my daughter together there's memories so this one I let it bloom last year because it's solid in its pot finally but I didn't like that it did not progress in any kind of vegetative growth to my liking last summer after it finished blooming so this winter I think I cut three spikes off it kept trying and blooming and I don't know what and I was having none of it it was very hard very difficult to do but I was chopping those spikes off as soon as they were long enough not to branch so let's see what its excuses for this year because as far as I'm concerned there's no reason why it should not now develop according to its original size. Okay, so this is Phalaenopsis Baba. And this is a complex hybrid, no ID, but uh, the big, beautiful white ones. I call it Maximilian after my son because it was gifted to us at that time and uh, it bloomed I let it bloom last year because it was doing well it is absolutely solid solid in this pot which is great so I let it bloom last year it was beautiful beautiful and then no vegetative growth throughout the summer so same story I mean look at this and these weren't the biggest leaves so this is what I got last summer and I'm like, uh, it's not happening. So when it wanted to spike throughout the winter, again, once they were long enough, I took them off. So now it's growing this leaf here, which we're off to a good start, but it better not stop. Another thing I'm watching out for is this root. I'm keeping it quite wet so that when the time comes, I'm just going to bend it around and stick it in the pot. I'm not wasting anything on these aerial roots until this these phalaenopsis aren't actually pot bound but yeah so this is maximilian the only reason was my vegetative growth in the summer was less than impressive so i'm gonna see what it does this time whether it's a complex hybrid or here we have like a summer bloomer hybrid novelty hybrid this uh, is supposedly my ktc cow kitchuk with cornicia cornicia i'll put it up and it bloomed for me with two flowers last year and i let it bloom but i took them off prematurely because it was doing this now they get uh, epsom salts on a regular basis it did come with discoloration when I got it from Schwerter. So I do have Epsom salts in their mix and all the other nutrients with an MSU fertilizer. But apart from creating that flower spike and blooming, I have seen it do absolutely nothing except develop a small brown spot right there, which I promptly treated with some dragon's blood. So that has not spread. But yeah, I'm showing this, even though it feels good in the pot, there's nothing encouraging about it at this moment. So I'll have to wait and see what this thing is going to do in the coming months. Here's another little summer bloomer, Spicioso crossed with Violacea. Has not bloomed from me also came from Schwerter. These discolorations have never gone away. It's how it arrived. Let's just say I'm not making, doing any different mixes with this one regarding its fertilization or anything like that. At least I'm seeing something with the, with the new leaf coming out there. But other than that, 
This little pathetic looking fell is not stable in the pot, but I'm not going to take it out and check the roots or do anything like that because from what I used to do in the past, I would think, you know, clean the roots after six weeks, eight weeks, those that have died, etc. No, uh, I'm not touching it. <laughs> I'm going to see what it does. Have a bit of sphagnum moss for some added humidity up uh, on the around the base. But yeah, Speciosa cross with Violacea. Maybe it's a Schwerter thing as well. I don't know. And here is a little mini no ID. Such a cutie. We call it Vega Cecilia after the most finest, most expensive red wine from Rivera del Duero in uh, Spain here because of the blooms and why is it blooming well I'm cheating here a little bit because I in total this winter cut off 13 spikes out of my phalaenopsis so number 13 was the second spike of Vega Cecilia which I cut off because I thought let it bloom with one but not expend energy on both I was hoping the spikes would fail because I treated it to a repot fast because it was growing three amazing aerial roots. And I'm like, what are you doing? Go inside and it wouldn't. So I thought, okay, at least I'm going to do the right thing and I'll forfeit the spikes. I won't cut them off. If they fall, they fall. That's okay with me. They didn't. They kept growing. So I thought, oh, okay. Well, at least the roots are now sort of, you know, getting hydration and I hope they go down and don't start coming back up this way. So I cut one spike off and I thought I would just treat myself to a little bit of Vega Cecilia. I mean, everybody needs a bit of red wine in these times, hey? Yeah, but we'll see how long I'll leave it on. I will um, maybe cut it off after all the blooms have opened and stick it in a vase and then let the work start to recover because this is not pot bound either. So yeah, those are my delinquent fowls. If I missed any, that would be hardly surprising. I might have a few more, but I didn't want to make this video long because the story pretty much repeats itself across the board with regards to what is going wrong or what is not going right on semantics, but yeah, that was them. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great day. Bye.